Long ago, during the reign of Daeron the Good, a Targaryen summer house was built on a doorstep of Dawn, constructed to celebrate the nation's peaceful unity with the Iron Throne. The young king spent much of his time and youth in the mighty palace of Summerhall. As he grew older and sicker, he passed a keep to his youngest son, Prince Maekar. Since then, this hall has been a grand and lavish place to host the Targaryens during the summer months. Each feast grew more and more lavish, each visit becoming longer and longer. Eventually, the summer stables were established to provide grain, meat, and grunt living quarters to those who served Summer Hall. A large number of horses grazed upon the hills and fields in the area, and so they were caught and bred to be trained into work horses and war horses. As Summer Hall grew, so did the summer stables. With more and more grain came more and more frets from the outside. Soon the summer stables were as profitable as any other keep. Bandits took notice and began to plunder the lands whenever the Targaryens were in King's Landing, devastating the supplies of the land. That all changed when my father, Sir Lucian, answered the call of aid. He grew up not too far from the summer fields, and as such knew the pains of the local people. As a hedge knight, he pledged his sword and shield to protect the lands. The people loved him, and he loved aiding them. In his year spent with them, he learned how to tame horses, and soon, began, and soon began to train with many of them, the locals naming him Lucian the Steed for his proficiency with the mighty animals. He protected them from many local bandit raids, and was eventually allowed by the Targaryen prince to treat the keep in the summer stables as a temporary home. And so he did. He continued to serve and protect the lands as a young knight, keeping the locals safe from harm. It paid well, and it kept him happy. He could do it forever, in fact. But then, it happened. No one is still sure how. Maces have their theories, the locals have their own. That horrid summer, the mighty palace at Summerhall caught flame. The fires spread all across, burning down the forest and much of the farmland. By the time the fires had ceased, the king was dead. The hall was ruined. And born was the prince, a prince of death, a cursed sign. While the halls were gone, the summer fields still had a use. The horses still grazed upon the stables and the farms could be restored, but only with the right man in charge. For his protection of the people, my father was granted the same space of land that he had protected. He was a landed knight, granted the protective fort of the summer stables to act as his new home. Eris saw potential in my father, and my father saw potential in him. The kingdom prospered. For a time. Now Lucy in the Steed was no longer a name given by the locals. He took the honorific as his name and his sigil. And how Steed was born. I was born a few years later, in 263. My newly landed father had married the woman who had always been sweet on him. Marrying for love above all else. He was a smart man. A good man. As years went on, he continued his passions and his love. He helped the farmers collect the food. He rode and trained to joust. But above all, he loved spending time with me. Training me. By the time I was 16, he called me a greater swordsman than he'd ever been. I was 19 when banners were called. I heard only tales, parts of the full story. My Lord Robert had found his love taken by that cursed prince of death. He called for our aid, for all banners to meet in Storm's End. My father had to remain and protect the summer stables, but he knew I was ready. I took up arms, and with our very limited amount of men, marched to Storm's End to meet them. On the road to Storm's End I had heard the news, traitors in our own ranks. Catherine, Fell, and Grandison all planned to remain loyal to Eris, to gather troops in the ruins not too far from my father and my home. I met Robert's army on the way to fight those same traitors. He had never met me before, but he, he knew my banners. He commanded me to follow, and so I did. They had not reached my father in the summer stables, thank goodness. He was well. My mother was happy to see me, if only for a short while. We marched through home and proceeded to forth to fight them in the ruins at Summerhall, a place I had heard cursed since a dare I was born. The battle lasted only a day. We defeated the armies and marched forth, only to be caught by the Reachmen. 
they cut through us with ease, overpowering us. I managed to slay a few men, but I watched and saw Randall Tarly slicing through men with ease, his armies following his every word. I felt I might die before I even saw a chance forward. I was lucky to be wrong. My men and I managed to flee north alongside Robert, marching towards our allies in the north. I fought at the Battle of the Bells. I somehow lived. By the time I had reached River Run, I had fought it all a dream. That I had been slayed by the Tarleys at Ashford, and this was all some hallucination after it. As my Lord Robert arrived in the city, he did me a great service. Alongside other men of worth, he made me take the knee and knighted me as Sir Giles. It was a true honour. The same honour my father once bore. Never had I felt so alive. I had followed in my father's footsteps, and I had been rewarded for it. That night I drank and slept well. Too well. For in my time of my greatest pride, I made my greatest mistake. After the trident and march on King's Landing, I would soon learn of that mistake. A child, born of my blood but not of my name. A bastard. I had dishonoured myself, but I could not dishonour the poor girl and the boy to a life of poverty. She could barely feed one mouth, let alone two. I returned to Riverrun and gave the girl some gold dragons, and took the boy with me down on the road home towards the summer stables. I wondered what my father would think when he saw the bastard boy. I never got my answer. Instead, I found my father's grave had already been dug, and my mother buried in the same coffin. I found the wheat fields burned down, the horses missing as they had fled the fields. The people were alive but broken. After Ashford, Lord Tarly had continued the reach forwards towards Storm's End. Along the way, he had passed by the summer stables, guarded only by a token force. My father did not allow them to take grain and food as tithe, for they had felt a need to replenish before marching forth. He paid with his life. They told me not many who fought lived to tell the tale of what happened, but I saw how he commanded his blade at Ashford. I have no doubt. Randall Tarley killed my father. It has not been long since, only a few months. Barely time to grasp my bearings. Lord Renly and his regent, Fangrid, assured me that I would inherit my father's titles, though not as a lord, but only as a sir. They granted me a small payment in thanks for my aid, and for the lives lost of my men, and I was promised I would be granted a bride from the Stormlands. None of it made up for what happened. Nothing will. The Reach, and we are now once more at peace, but I cannot forgive what happened. There must be justice one day. Each night I look up towards those ruins and imagine them at their prime, the mighty palace of Summerhall, with me at the helm. It's a foolish dream for a night, but my whole life has felt like a dream, a nightmare since Ashford. The House of Steed is not dead. This is only its beginning. Hello guys and welcome to some Crusade of Kings 2, a game of thrones. Today we are going to be playing as Sir Giles of the Summer Stables. The uh, stables which served the mighty Summerhall. Which now that they have fallen have become their own albeit minor entity. The uh, fort used to protect the uh, stables now becoming a castle of its own. A sort of keep, although not a major one. Not yet. We are merely a landed knight, knighted by our father and given his lands upon his death. And given these continuances of lands by good king uh, Robert, which for some reason it will say that he's a uh, I'll get him from how that looks, but uh, that'll change soon. We are here with Sir Guile to play out a story of this house steed. See if we can take them from irrelevance into being a mighty house sitting upon the Iron Throne. That's the hope, at least. Well, maybe not to sit on the Iron Throne. I mean, that thing looks a bit, you know, you could get your hand cut on that thing. And multiple kings have. But my goal 
for Sir Giles' life is simply to increase the uh, the sort of knowledge and the sort of knowing of House Steed, and possibly to uh, become a lord outright, a proper. We are somewhat noble. We are a landed knight, but to earn a proper lordship title would be the the aim, at least for Sir Giles or the first couple of generations. But what do I want to do overall? I want to restore Summer Hall. I want to make a name for ourselves within the Stormlands, and I want to remain loyal to the Baratheons. Sort of, uh, especially Robert and Renly, but uh, most definitely Robert for what he's done for us and what uh, we did with him in the war. So, we're going to start off by getting ourselves a possible bride. We'll do the little cheat of setting the ambition to get married so that we can get the bonus from it. We go get married. I did spot one when I was looking before I started recording, which they did seem interesting to me. I looked at them and I thought they'd be a good uh, suitor. I'm mainly looking for uh, Stormlanders, because I think Stormlanders are who, you know, would be promised by Robert in this situation. There is a Daenerys of Targa uh, Targaryen at age zero, but I don't think a zero-year-old will be uh, <laughs> what I'm after. Look. So we do have a few Reachmen for Stormlander here, but let's put it on only adults. I thought I was going to say there was no adults from only adults, but that's a little uh, presumptuous. Again, a lot of people of the Reach. I did see, I don't know if he doesn't want to give her away. There was her, but she may not, maybe she doesn't like me? Alright, I already offered it. <laughs> Long live the king. Yeah, I believe I already sent the offer. That's why he's considering it. There we go. Get the ambition done. And now we can pick a different ambition. Yes, it's everyone's concern. Meaning give me money for the dowry, please. Ambition-wise, I would like... See, I don't have the option to have a son, as we do already have Joffrey. I would like to make a friend. Now, Joffrey is a very interesting case. Joffrey is quick... He inherited that from me, but he is a bastard. He is a bastard. His mother is not known as it was a lone-born wench in the Riverlands. Uh, specifically near Riverrun itself. So this sort of region here, near the Trident. Certainly not a good look. Uh, it sort of dishonours the knight already, before the wedding, to, to have this uh, bastard born. I think I will train him to be a bit like his father. Will he be legitimized? That's a that's a different question. We'll have to see how the, how the path goes. I mean, he is at least going to live within the the halls of House Steed. Uh, it's the belief of Sir Guile, that, you know, he wouldn't want him to grow up in complete and total sort of uh, isolation, separate from the sort of life that his father's forced him into. So, at the very least, Joffrey will will get that. As for our focus. Let's see, stewardship or family is one thing. I don't think he needs extra. He's, he's, he's already quite the marshal. He doesn't need any extra, so I think we'll go family for now. And let's get started. Hey, the customary dowry, meaning we can immediately buy some private farms to get our tax income up. Right, let's get ourselves a council. My wife can be my dresser car. And Sir Bonifer the Good can be my master at arms. Uh, obviously, Sir Bonifer is a book character and a canonical character. Has quite a few conversations with Jamie, off the top of my head. Uh, Sir Bonifer is, was uh, infatuated, very much so, with uh, Robert's predecessor. Uh, his his sister, or eventually sister wife. Because that's how Game of Thrones is. But his sister wife, uh, Bonifer, was was deeply sort of in love with her, and she was in love with Bonifer. But it would it would never work out. He was uh, from far too low born a status. He was merely a landed knight, and uh, in the game, he's he he's, this is actually his lands. It's uh, called Hadlow Keep in the base game. I think they just made that name up because I can't believe I don't believe there's any reference to where the Hasties are from. But Bonifer Hasty is a landed knight, and he's from near here. 
I believe also Duncan the Tall mentions the uh, hasties at some point. Lady Shira of the Wendwater. Yes, I'd love to. Let's be buddies. As I said, I need friends. Unfortunately, I can't. Yeah, I, you invited me to make to make friends, mate. But I'm already making friends with a uh, becoming a paragon of virtue, Brownie. What bloodline does she have? Oh, she the Errols, yes. A powerful Stormland house. House Errol long ruled Haystack Hall, guarding the northern border of the Stormlands and the Kingswood, which they still hold today. Very impressive. Widespread rumours say that the High Septum leads a most wicked lifestyle, quite unsuitable for any Septum, and even more so one of his exalted position. We are in agreement, I can't believe it. Yeah, I think restoring some hall is sort of the my long term goal. But if things go well we'll we'll, we'll see about pursuing beyond that. But restoring some hall I think makes sense to, to restore the use of the sum the uh, summer stables. And it's also, you know, it's quite a decent bit of land itself in a good position. I must Bonifer, what are you what are you what you like? So Bonifer wants to refuse marriage so that he can become a member of the King's Guard. It is his goal, so uh, I'll allow it. Joining the King's Guard feels like a, a path that makes sense for Bonifer. But you know, now that it's no longer a king that he would hate, at least it makes sense. We do obviously have the trait knighted by a lord, as we were knighted by Robert when he was a lord, even though he is now a king. We have pretty decent traits, but we are we are ruthless, and I will be playing him as if he were ruthless. I think it it only makes sense to play a, to play the character, you know, as the traits determine the character. So if my my son Joffrey, if we even end up legitimizing him, but if if he you know ends up being a a kind person, we'll play him very differently to how we play his father. Hey, I've already got a friend. Lady Shire is now a friend of mine. How nice. I'd like an honorary title now. As I am already on um, Renly's council, I'm serving as his Master of Arms. Which, I mean, makes sense. <laughs> Recently, you have known a charming woman at your court. You have never heard her name before, but her refined manners and etiquette suggest that she is a fine upbringing. She's an expert conversationalist and everyone adores her. Maybe you could make use of her talents. Cassandra of Vais Dakawolf. She's got really good diplomacy. But I think it's what it's saying is that my wife wouldn't be happy. Yeah, my wife wouldn't be happy. She's a better diplomat than my wife, who is my current Justicar. But I don't I don't want to piss off my wife. <laughs> my wife. Let's follow a uh, claim on Thornton. I, I was thinking earlier about between Thornton and uh, Poddingfield here. Uh, Poddingfield with the little pea pod on it for House Peasbury. But Thornton just makes more sense as it kind of opens avenues to uh, possibly going into Broad Arch or Blackhaven or into Grandview. As if we want to be mega expansionists. I I'm, don't want to be hugely expansionist. I just think we sort of need to have two dimensions to get the money that we sort of need because we really do need a bit of money and not only will it be money it will give us a bit more men so a bit more power to sort of throw our weight around a bit in the stormlands because think about the stormlands compared to other regions so when you look at it you have cape wrath you have the red watch and you have wind water but other than that it's just a bunch of minor houses uh this is different in um ck3 to be fair in ck3 i think tarf is like multiple provinces a lot of these places are multiple provinces like griffin's roost i know has a couple provinces in it but yeah most of it is sort of like one province uh lords which you know is is arguably more accurate to why why was the tullys in in everything's going weird there but um it it sort of is extra provinces in each but here everybody's one province which is more accurate to the books since you know it's mentioned the Starks have Winterfell, but it doesn't mention they have much more beyond it. I think the only place that's mentioned directly is owned by the Starks beyond Winterfell is Moat Caelan. Here. But Moat Caelan is kind of a ruins. Uh, 
the only thing about Moat Kaelin is because of its position and because of its um, sort of ruined state, but still fortifications, uh, it's a suitable sort of um, entrance to the neck. And obviously the neck itself is very hard to get through thanks to our talented boy, Howland Reed, here with 120 personal combat skill. We're, we're a big fan of Howland Reed here. I, I really wish we would have had a chance to really get to see Howland Reed in the books, but we, when the winter is probably never coming. I like to think he would be in Winds of Winter. I don't think he'd be in the book after. I think he's definitely a character that should be introduced in Winds of Winter. Uh... Probably in multiple situations, possibly either Bran coming down from the north to meet with Howland so that Howland could take him to the Isle of Faces, as uh, Howland's one of the only people who have been there. Or for um, Lady uh, Stoneheart to meet with Howland and Howland be like, hey, I got Neddy Boy's bones. And also Rob's will. And also, I know that Jon Snow is actually the son of uh, Ellen J. Was it Eleanor? And knowing all this information, I'm here to uh, say, stop being mean. Just stop being mean. And then Lady Stoneheart will go, wow, you're so right. I'm going to stop being mean. I didn't want to give major spoilers, so I think that was... <laughs> I think that was... Uh, including as little as possible. <laughs> yeah, but I think most people at this point sort of have caught up on Winds of Winter, or... What would be in Winter Winter if it ever existed? Try by court. All the, the Mark Tales are just screwing each other over, over and over again, it seems looks like. Why, why does the game think I want to know about the trial of Gaston Grey, who owns this literally minuscule... So Gaston Grey is this minuscule province here, owned by the Martells. And then he's got like a hundred bloodlines. <laughs> this one little guy. Yeah, it makes sense, he's a Martel. That's what Martels do, is, is boast about their bloodlines and their prestige. Let's perform some charity. And... Uh, could like taxes. I was going to think about overseeing construction, but I think taxes is better. Uh, yeah, stop telling me about trials, actually. Uh, about... <laughs> Like, I, I, at first they were interesting, but there's a little too many of them going on. Well, why, are you, why are you so bad that you're making the rebels hate me? Can't believe it. Look, she's starting to like me. Maybe we can have kids now. So I won't have to legitimize Joffrey. <laughs> you served that on, on my lawn. So much usurping going on. What's Renly up to? So Renly is not betrothed to anyone at all. I would have thought that like he would have tried to get an alliance in his childhood, but I guess he's going to wait till he's an adult. Stannis is not at home. Where's Stannis going? He's at war? He's in against the Robard the White Knife Peasant Revolt. Okay, he's come back home now. He went off to fight in that war, apparently. So he was Robot of Fervor, this random guy here in the neck. Or is this actually part of the neck? Is he a Kranachman? No, he's a Northman. So he, he it's that's not actually the North. Oh, and Ned's given away Moat Kalen. Oh, it actually gives it to a commander rather than a... That's pretty good. I didn't realize it gave it to commanders. Oh, Alan Reed, isn't the land seem a lot smaller? I thought you also had fever. But no, his lands are actually pretty small. Compared to what I thought. But he is a Kranach man. Um, do I want to pay? I'll owe you a favour. Good drinks and food. Carousing everything fine. Or was fine until Lady Shara unexpectedly threw a fit of rage. I'm not sure why. But she's coming at me now with her fists up. She wants to... No, let's just calm down. Lordships of the uh, subjects of Kings Robert, the inheritance of Pine Forest has been thrown into question after the unexpected death of Lord Adrian Pine. He left no clear heir, and I hereby name Margot Baron as a lawful heir. Sure. Oh, 
Ah. She wishes for me to train her, her son Sebastian. Sure. I think that's uh, fitting. Who can I get to, to train you? Huh? Useless bastard. Okay, so once again, then you I'll get a lot of these news updates from the north, and it's always just Ned Stark has killed someone. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, he's Ned Stark. I, I think that he, he's sort of going to do that, you know? Right, how are things going in Fawn? We got a claim on them yet? No. It's my wife who's, who's making the claim, right? Yeah. Oh, well, different timeline, I guess. We're not going to have a big uh, war in the Seven Kingdoms because Littlefinger fucking died. Valerian Steel Sword. Oh, his dagger. I was going to say, why has he got a Valerian Steel Sword? It'll be his dagger. He has a son, so... Maybe uh, Ulfor will be the new Littlefinger in this timeline with his Valerian Steel Dagger. And the blood of Littlefinger. <laughs> Become one of the richest and most powerful men in Westeros. Not in this timeline, he didn't. He died as a penniless 19-year-old. My beloved wife is constantly bored. Um, I, I lose piety so much. I could do with being zealous. Let's see if I can become zealous. Yay! I'm zealous now. Does that fix my piety? It does. I'm now a pious man. There you go. I'll teach him to be less nosy. Or he could lose. Nah. Learn privacy, kid. <laughs> I'm doing this on your mother's behalf. Because you're, you're her heir, right? Yes. Huzzah, my wife's finally pregnant. Will it, will it, will it be a boy? To, uh... I mean, if it is a boy, then I won't really need Joffrey anymore. But then the question will become, what what happens with Joffrey? Because he, you know, he's talented. He's 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 very talented for his age. Obviously, quick help definitely helps with that. But there's no doubt that the boy's, you know, smarter than some. Definitely have to wonder what will what will happen. I don't think that Giles are the type to sort of abandon him, but you know, if the boy sort of ends up, um, I was taking another kid into my wardrobe, I guess, but you know, if the kid ends up in a sort of situation where it makes more sense to send him away, whether it be to the the wall or to the, I, I think it's Giles will probably see the wall as you know like a bad thing because it's only really the Northmen and the Blackwoods who see the sort of wall as an honourable thing to do, where like they voluntarily go. So maybe more on the path of a septum or like being like off you go boy you can be. Oh game master thank you. You can be a cell sword boy. You 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 can prove yourself on the skills like my father did. It is a boy. It is. What name shall we give him? Have a look at the generated ones. Arlen. Arlen Steed. Yes, please. So the young boy Arlen Steed is now our heir. And looking at him, he also inherited Quick. So he's also very intelligent. I think we will... I think he, all he knows is combat, really. He's not that great a steward, so I think he will train his, his children. Both, like, all his children in combat, really. That's the kind of man he is. And obviously, I also want him to train them himself, because it's what his father did. I don't think he'd send them away for, for tutors in this sort. Oh, they would have tutors, but you know, uh, wardship is what more what I meant. Oh, I'm a devout follower of the Seven. One god with seven distinct aspects. Each aspect represents a different principle. The father for justice, the mother fertility and compassion, the warrior strength in battle, the crone wisdom, the swift crafts and labour, the maiden innocence and the stranger deaf and the unknown. Let's see. I think... So, Warriors, Piety, Marshal... What was the father? Justice. I, I think while Warrior makes sense because he, he is a... You know, he's a knighted soldier who fought in the war. 
as it was his father, I think he would justice is what he would see more than anything else. Word against word, the farmers against a court case about damage caused the farmer's house by a cow owned by the courtier. I think the farmer should be compensated. Definitely, the farmer should be compensated there. And we can... Basically, the second I have 75 or 76 gold, it's immediately going into building this up. So what are we going to build? I would like some archers, please. Yes, more parties with, with the... I mean, we're basically BFFs. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm training their kids, so... It's Arlen Steed shall be next in line. But obviously... Oh, he's worthful. That's a good one. He's quick. He's quick. He's 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 also going to be a, a good asset. Both children will grow up to be good, but simply one is a bastard and so isn't next in line. But Skyle's in a bit of an awkward situation. And she's pregnant again! Oh my. So is she just insane or something? Why does she keep getting angry? Let's look at her traits. No, but she's a hedonist. She's dedicated to the stranger of all people. Hmm. I guess it makes sense she's uh, intrigued in diplomacy. Lord Benis Farisay to Madame Trabad. Let's see. Okay, he's innocent. Good. What's Mace up to? How old is Mace now? Is he only 34? Is Elena alive? Elena is... <laughs> Weirdly, everyone has new faces from the face pack, but Elena does not. Elena still has her old face. Yeah, as I mentioned, everybody in the north just dies to trial by combat. Um, I can buy something nice for my life. So many trial by combat. Uh, I'll say don't. I I miss out sometimes on some really funny trial by combats by doing this. I had a game where um, Stannis was killed by Tywin in a trial by combat. Not on behalf of Stannis, by Stannis. I have a child. I'm going to name her after my dear friend here, so Shira. My first daughter. And let's educate her in thrift. <laughs> is my wife cheating on me? Because this is the first blonde kid of the two. Although, to be fair, she's brown-haired, so it doesn't make sense he could be brown-haired. I don't want to wed him yet. I'll wait until he's, he's of age before I look at options for him. Uh, a favour with... Sure. Oh, looks like Rob Renly was also going to offer me a favour. Ah, I should have waited. Should have waited to accept Renly's offer. Because obviously Renly's one I'd rather have. Who do I want as my regent? Sir Bonifer the Good. Why not? We, lo we, we love Bonifer. We love a book character here. Bryce could be my master of the house. Do I need another commander? I can only have two commanders. Oh, okay. Uh, let's get a wet nurse for my wife. And Bonifer will also be a bodyguard. There we go. And Jortland can be the master of the hunt. Catus mysteriously disappeared from herds all throughout my lands. Luckily my bailiff found the rustlers. I have some monthly piety, yes, thank you. Deal it with these, uh, thieves. Oh, of course I'll come to a party. But yeah, I specifically feel like to le to legitimise himself, Sir Guy would definitely sort of attend these parties with with lords and ladies, wanting to push his name out there as he, because he's he's not a lord yet. He is still just a sir. He's still just a landed knight. But he could he could earn his way to a lordship. But it's going to take time and it's going to take uh, sort of respect. You'd think money, but it's also but money and respect are basically the same thing. To all subjects, 
for the crime of failing to keep peace and disobeying an express command to cease holidays, I hereby name Lord Garion Lannister a traitor, an enemy of the realm. Oh my. Has he fled the realm? I was going to say, because he, he, he's of the Westerlands, but he's fled the realm. Garion Lannister, wow. The the favoured um, uncle of Tyrion and Jaime. They always spoke fondly of him. At least I believe that's Garion. I believe Garion is the one who um, sailed around and uh, then sailed around sort of the uh, all of these regions hoping to uh, find a way or find the Valerian steel sword that was lost uh, for the Lannisters. Oh, you finally got the claim. How much? 25? Yeah. Basically all my golds, but we now have a claim on Thornton, who's led by a child. So they have no allies. 3.8k versus... So I have less. So I will pause and think about this for a moment. So I have less. He has more armies, but he is a baby. He is a little child. And I am a very good commander. But does he have good commanders in his court, maybe? Could do. What's it? Let's have... His master of arms is a good way, I think, to tell, like, the combat of his men. Okay, okay, commander. Well, let's see, would you want to be an ally? Because I'm married to your daughter. Oh, I'm not married to your daughter. Who are you? Oh, no, it's your daughter. Yes, yeah, Weeping Town's daughter I'm married. So do you want to be an ally? Hell yeah. And then... Do you have... Should I marry a child off... What if we marry off... I can't marry my daughter? Oh, but it's a betrothal, right. A betrothal? What about a matrilineal? No. They're both one. I think I think this is the kind of thing that you would do to like assure political alliances in this kind of way. Especially when you're like me. So we'll get an alliance with them. And then I think I'm going to go for this. So Windwater would be okay joining on my side by the looks of it. But yeah, please join if you would. I'd love it if you would join. You're my favourite person ever. Now, of course I will honor my obligations. Amazing. Am I not leading armies? I am allowed to lead armies, but I'm not leading this army. Why? I'd love to lead this army, in fact. I would adore the ability to lead my own army here, rather than my commander, because I'm a better fighter. Hmm. That's awkward. That's weird. She's, she's gathering her army anyway, so even if I lose this battle, which I will do, it's not over. That's very uh, unfortunate. I would have thought I'd be able to lead the army, because I, I would have thought me leading the army would... Uh, Give a better chance for us there. Because I am a, a b much better commander than um, Lummus. The Vicious Council has vote convened to vote on the dispute that has arisen between two vassals. Sir Guile Steed has been accused of invading. No, I voted against the motion because I'm on it. Oh, the council voted in my favour. How I've always loved the council, actually. <laughs> oh, I've always been a big, big fan of the council. We've loved the council. Uh, let's not have you fabricate a claim here. Let's have you actually stay at home. So I can have a wife. Let's quickly attack him before he actually takes my land. Because I don't want to lose my loot. Should have thought about that first, actually. Oh, perfect. We captured him in battle. And now we claim formed him. What a great start this is. Levy shifted burger obligation. Okay, so it's a bit more troops to give, but I'm in a budget deficit. It makes sense because I've, yeah, my, my army costs more than I have, but when you're fighting a war, you have to take risks. And after this war, I'll be significantly richer than I was before. Uh, it's no big secret Lord Stefan is after my job as Master of Arms, but he did surprise me when he asked me outright for help. Should I really teach Lord Stefan the secrets of my trade only to make it easier to steal my position as Master of Arms? Like, he's a significantly worse Master Arps. He's literally 12 worse. Um, 
I'll help him, but keep an eye on him. Because I, I actually don't mind the guy. Sir, I am pleased to report a successful Lord Ellis Catherine could not be found, however. But we did find... Put him under the house arrest. I don't want to be known as, like, kidnapping people's children and family. That is 100%, so we will enforce our demands. Huzzah! Let's lower our armies to earn some money. And I can create a high lordship! Look at that, already we are a lord. And our Lord Giles of Summerfield. And Summerfield makes sense uh, as a natural progression from the summer uh, stables, so I'm completely fine with that. And obviously Summerhall is actually a part of that, um, uh, this duchy. But we don't have the ability to make Summerhall, because we don't have thousands and thousands of, uh... So how much money, more money are we making? Well, we're losing money right now. I don't know why we're losing money right now, but we are. Oh, it's probably cause, just because a month hasn't ticked up, I think. Yeah, I'm, teach I'm teaching the Errols how to fight. <coughs> they should be uh, thankful for my guidance. Right, looking at my council now, let's see. Um, let's fabricate a claim on Poddingfield. Let's continue to oversee the realm. Keep collecting taxes here. But let's move the trained troops to Thornton and the performed charity to Thornton, since it's a newly taken over province. That should be good, right? Again, I'm not the best UK player, but that should be good. Right, we're building back up the garrison and the levy. And the tax is looted, so it's not doing great right now. Prince Renly of the Iron Throne has transferred the vassalage of Lord Hugh Grabe. So wait, he's now my vassal. Yay! Bit more money. So yes, that's son. He was also under my uh, this lordship. Yeah. So Grandview is now also mine. Perfect. Just by creating one title, I've I've gained myself a vassal here. Let's uh, sway him because he doesn't really like us right now, and I don't really like. I don't see any need to revoke his title. I don't have the dimensional size for it anyway. So he can he can keep. Grandview's a very good province though, actually. It's got uh, a lot of cities already in it, but here also has a city, the Sept of uh, Thornton. I declare that Lord Malady Manderley of White Harbour has upset the delicate balance of power in the realm by refusing to relinquish control to one of his vassals. Oh my. That does sound like a threat. A threat that I don't care about because it's the Mandalays. I've just seen that I've, I've got my age 31 face now. So does my wife, okay? My wife looks beautiful. Radiance in reaching the middle age look this mod gives her. She looks completely fine. I turn into Sylvester Stallone, apparently. <laughs> A blonde Sylvester Stallone leading the uh, summer fields. But he's now a lord. The the one ambition I did have for his his age of becoming a lord has been done. I, I had also thought about possibly doing it diplomatically. I believe if you like get a really good relationship with a lord, uh, with your Lord Paramount, they can name you a lord. Which I had thought about doing, like filing internees and, and earning my way, way up that way. But I feel like the opportunity of taking forms in it was a bit too much. He's not a huge expansionist, though, so maybe he'll calm down now. But, you know, if the opportunities arise, take more land. I won't say no. I just think that constantly seizing and taking land after land after land after a land isn't really what Crusader Kings is about, unless you're playing as, like, fucking Aegon the Conqueror. You know, it's it's, it's more about building your way up, which is exactly what I'm, what I'm doing here. The Lord of Thornton. Decent province. It's got seven tax value. Which is just a little bit lower than Hadlow Keep in uh, the stables. Winter is coming. How, how's my son doing? Doing very well in his education. He's being educated by my maester. Is my maester good? He's decent. Oh, a feast for Renly. Absolutely. Oh, and Joffrey's grown up, so it's time for his new education focus. We'll put him on Marshall. Already got a new claim. Sure. I'll do that, and then I can move you to perform statecraft. What education do I want for... I mean, it'll put me in debt already, but I'll, it's, I'll put him on poor education. <laughs> 
I don't exactly care greatly for the education of uh, Joffrey. It's not he's not forgotten, son. He's having some education, but you know, Arlen is Arlen is the chance here, and we're we're only just a lord. We don't have the money to um, take risks like that. Hey, Lord Hugh, want to spend time with me? Want to be buddies? And now we can talk in peace. I think these days have really helped me getting you to know and appreciate me better. We've spent the most of our time visiting the Dements, discussing all of the most uh, dispar disparate topics. Ugh, my brain. I'll pick the one that gives me an extra five opinion. Why not? It's a lack of funds gives a revolt risks a worse morale of armies and a minus my general opinion. So not great, but not devastating. And it'll be over soon anyway. So our balance has is, is gone very well from like 0.8 to 1.3. It's not as good as Tywin, who so I think earns like 14, 15. Oh, sorry, not Tywin. It's now Tyrion. What happened to Tywin? Wait, he... He got sent to the wall? Who sent Tywin to the wall? And Jamie died. Jamie was drowned in wine on the order of King Robert. <laughs> what on earth is going on? Is Robert becoming a tyrant? Am I going to have to start reconsidering my loyalties? What on earth? A position of commander. Absolutely. Uh, I don't want to lose. I'll pray for courage because I want to keep zealousness. Uh, my I apparently owe my. I'll give you a favor. Why would I give my wife money like that? What what would I owe her for? And now she's pregnant. Perfect. This is a very odd looking uh, duchy here, isn't it? <laughs> Grandview actually feels very out of place in possession of this duchy. Grandview feels like, like, what's the duchy that you're in charge of? Okay, Griffin's Roost is a weird one. So Griffin's Roost is this. Grandview maybe feels like it should be part of Griffin's View, and Blackhaven should be part of this one. I don't know, it's very weird, but Blackhaven is actually a part of, um... It's not a part of any, apparently. It's its own thing. But maybe because it's, like, historically, it's, like, belonged to itself or something, and that's why. What's Poddingfield? Poddingfield is also not a part of one. Interesting. So these are also not part of any duchy. So all of these four are not part of any duchy. My mother-in-law died a natural death. My lord, I believe Esper and Varen has been in custody for too long. Oh, some a ransom? Oh yeah. I didn't even know I took this guy. It must have been in the war. Here we go. Look at how we're getting our, levy, our levies back up. We have a total potential of 2,600 men. Perfect. Villagers are starving in some stables, and a small group of representatives have dared step foot in my castle to petition for help. Of course. Absolutely. I don't remember killing Goen. I think Goen just <laughs> is... Ah, I've had a daughter. Oh, wonderful. So that's my second daughter. No, it's a son. It is a son. I'm oh, sorry, the hair mod would just make me immediately go daughter. No, the, the name it picked was, was uh, female. The Grant. Grants. I mean, come on. Grants is, like, not male or female. Grants is the name you give to, um, like, when you're, like, what do we name the tractor? <laughs> let's name it Grants. Uh, let's see. Should I name him after me? Would it be funny? Yeah. Go on, name the second son after me. So we now have Giles Steed. Winter is coming to an end. Well, if winter's coming to an end, we'll also uh, end it here. Well, a fantastic sort of beginning of a life for uh, Lord Giles. Only 33 years old, but has already cemented himself as a lord in the Stormlands. One of the more powerful lords already, because of how sort of weakened the Stormlands are. But the Lord of Summerfield still looks at Summerhall and wonders if anyone could ever restore that broken and empty thing. And with Robert becoming a tyrant, will 
the man who fought and bled for Robert continue to do so? We'll have to find out next time. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.